Matt, thanks for joining us again to talk about the Reading property market and specifically our Reading property blog, February 2023. It is the 2nd of February. Interest rates have just popped up to 4%. So we're almost in uncharted territory from the Bank of England point of view, highest interest rates in about 14 years. However, that is having very little effect on mortgage rates. Firstly, we, we've obviously had a chat with our brokers this morning. They believe that this is all priced in and we're almost at a point where mortgage rates are below Bank of England rates, Matt. What do you think? Do you think that's going to continue? Do you think that's a trend that we're likely to see for the long term? Yeah, I think it, was, it was, wasn't It was a surprise to anyone, really, the, the base rate jump. So I think the lenders were expecting that. That's priced into the products. We're hearing that inflation is starting to cool. So I think we're kind of entering into a new normal now. Yeah, the way I it's see it. the the standard purchase rates at the moment are ranging between four and a quarter to to five percent. And whilst a lot of tracker rates tend to follow the Bank of England base rate, which is I think why people think the Bank of England base rate changing means their mortgage will change. Realistically, banks don't actually price their money on the Bank of England interest rate do they no so it's, it's indirectly related not directly related right so the the lenders are looking at the swap rates whereas the uh the base rate only impacts you if you're on a tracker mortgage like you said so um i think there are more people i'm hearing of who have hedged their bets a little bit with a tracker and i think maybe now is the time to reassess and see is that tracker still the right product now we're entering a more stable mortgage market yeah, absolutely. I think we, we're much more likely to know what we're going to get in February as compared to October, November 22. I did a post. Someone asked me in November, early November, I said, should I fix my mortgage or wait? And I said, well, don't sue me. But if it were me, <laughs> if it were me, I'd get onto the tracker rate and reassess it in January. And actually, I was quite pleased with myself because looking back. <laughs> nice to be right, isn't it? Nice to <laughs> nice to be able to pull those out of the archive when uh, when we're right about things. So, your blog that you've written, very, very technical based on what types of properties in Reading are being marketed and what is going on to actually sell in the first four to six weeks of the market this year. So tell us a little bit about what you found. So what we're seeing in Reading is an increase in the lower price properties in the new year. So the properties under 250,000 is an increase in those selling, primarily because of the first time buyer market coming back in in the new year, buying up the one bed, the two bed flats and the lower price properties, which then kickstarts other moves as change, chains begin to build. Yeah. So this is reflected nationally. I've got some numbers in front of me. 38.2% of properties m brought to the market nationally in recent times have had an asking price of £250,000 or less. Yet 45.6% of properties that are that price are the ones that are selling. So it's a variance of about 7%, which might not sound massive, but it's, it's taking a huge chunk out of the top end where you're going to see the reverse, where far more properties are being listed than selling. So you briefly went into it. Let's go into a little bit more detail about why at this time of year, a lower end property or a lower priced property is more likely to sell than, a, than an expensive house. What's the time of year got to do with that? So similarly, in the way that we said in the summer, there's a drop off in the family homes coming to market when families are on holiday. The new year typically is when the first time buyers, perhaps they've got a deposit from mum and dad, perhaps there's, you know, it's that new year, new start, looking at getting on the ladder. And generally the larger family homes, i.e. even more expensive properties, they're typically more seasonal and when they transact. So the average year being, it picks up in March and then people are looking to move before September when the school year starts. So we see the lower price properties come into play a bit more earlier in the year where those family homes are less involved in, in the average transaction. So Reading is a reasonably typically built town in that 
in the town centre, it's squashed in with apartments and Victorian terraces. And as, as you hit the suburbs, your Woodleys, your Cavishams, your Lower Earlys, you start to see the three-bed semis and the four-bed detached around the edge in the, in the kind of suburbs and the school areas. Does that mean that different times of year, you're better off marketing and selling your property depending on what type of house it is? I think there are arguments for both. I'm always saying move when it's right for you. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you could say, you know, arguably when there's less competition on the market, that's a smarter time to go on the market. So I think, yep. you know, number one is always your circumstances need to dictate what you do. But second to that, you know, just be mindful of what else is available. If your market is flooded full of three bedroom semis and you're selling a a three bedroom semi you just need to be aware of that and consider that with your pricing the same thing glo- goes for a one or a two bedroom flat in the reading town center you're always going to have competition just because there are so many properties in the reading yep. town center uh, but just being mindful of what else is available yeah it's a really interesting stat that more properties are selling than are coming to market in every single price band up to £300,000 in the UK at the moment. So all of the uh, people who give stats based on the entire market dropping or the entire market Mm. being fine, you need to look a little bit more granularly. You need to look in types of property, in demographics and into locations before you make a judgment on a market because there's this massive correlation here that every single price band from £100,000 up to three hundred, they they're outselling the number of listings. And then as soon as you go over three hundred, there's more listings than sales. So only a certain percentage of houses that are coming to market are actually selling. So what we're saying 2nd of February is if you have a smaller property that is suitable for a first time buyer, January and February are very, very good times to market property. My personal view on that is because those first time buyers or those investment buyers have just spent a long time with their families over Christmas and a long time to make those decisions and make plans. And it happened to me once upon a time, a lot of years ago, I was handed a, a check to get myself moving. It wasn't a massive check, granted, but it <laughs> certainly <enough>. helped. <laughs> um, you know, I was saving, saving, saving. And on Christmas Day, a little check came to me from from parents and grandparents. Say, so we know you're saving for a house rather than buy you presents. Here's some money. Some people do very, very well. Some people get less and some people get nothing. Unfortunately, that's the way of the world. But it powers the first time market, first time buyer market and investor market into the new year. And then means those people who are living in properties that are suitable for a first time buyer are released to go and buy the three bed semis and the detached houses in in the suburban areas. So we expect to see these graphs turn round from April, May, June onwards. So I think from from Matt and I for the Reading market, it's it's quite clear to say it's a great time to be selling a property that is suitable for a first time buyer. Uh, and there have been some mixed times, haven't there, with with leasehold properties over the last three or four years. For sure. And if you're looking at selling your three bedroom, your, your second time move house over the next couple of months, you should prick your ears up because the people who are likely to buy your house are going under offer as we speak. Yeah, it's such a great, such a a nuanced point, but something to keep in mind because obviously a move is something people usually plan months, if not years in advance. So keeping in mind that you're, you have a window there in January and February to get that first time buyer market, which can then help you in the rest of the year as you look to upsize. Keep that in mind when you're planning ahead, even if it's next year or the year after. Yeah, absolutely. So those national statistics that you're likely to see about a slowdown in house price inflation and this, that and the other and blah, blah, blah. It's coming from agents who have been in doing this for a, a decade or more. Estate agents sold register is always lowest in January. We always sell cheaper properties in January or February 
and that always warms through the summer to selling the three and four beds. So from an estate agency point of view, the profit is made in quarters three and four. And looking at the data, and this is supplied by Denton House using 20EA, and if you don't know it, 20CI, who are the parent company of 20EA, are the biggest data collectors in the UK. So this is proper data. It's not just circumstantial evidence. Um, The market very broadly, and this is a bombshell, the market very broadly is working normally. Hey, who thought it? (laughs) Who knew? (laughs) Let's all calm down. So (laughs) thanks for joining us. Matt, thanks for joining us again. Can't wait to see what you and your team in Reading bring us in the next couple of weeks on the blogs and on the stats to keep people properly informed in Reading. Until next time, have a good week. Cheers, Mike.